Hello, this is Pastor Paul Coles from Friendship Baptist Church in Warner Robins. It's my honor and joy to be with you today. I wish we could be together, but because of social distancing that is so important and necessary during this time of uncertainty, I thank you for joining us today. The date was August 5th, 2010. The place was the San Jose Mine, a gold, copper, and mineral mine in northern Chile. Miners were working deep inside the mine that day when they started feeling vibrations. And then there was a massive explosion, and the passageways of the mine were filled with dust. A single block of stone, as tall as a 45-story building, began to collapse and to fill up the passageways into the mine. Caused a chain reaction, and portions of the mountain actually began to collapse too. 70, 770,000 tons of stone in a single block began to collapse. This created an immense problem for those 33 miners. For the next 69 days, they literally found themselves trapped. This 770,000 tons of stone was twice the weight of the Empire State Building. But the good news is on October 13th, 2010, those 33 miners, every single one of them, came out to the surface of the earth through a newly drilled escape tunnel. It was a miraculous feat of engineering and, oh, by the way, the grace of God as well. One miner, Mario Sepulveda, said this, We always knew that we would be rescued. We never lost faith. Another miner said that there were not 33 people down there. Instead, there were 34. He said, God was with us the entire time, giving us hope. All around the world, a pandemic called the coronavirus has caused us to feel vibrations in the stock market, hospitals, medical facilities, governments, businesses, schools, as the explosion of a microscopic virus has caused a chain reaction that's affecting all of our lives. This virus is no respecter of persons, men and women, young and old, rich and poor, powerful and unknown, Christians and non-Christians alike. The question that many people are asking is this, is there any hope? I hope you'll take your Bibles and turn with me to Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. This passage tells us that believers can rejoice even in our sufferings through the coronavirus or whatever difficulties you're facing today. You may say, well, well, well why can we have uh, any rejoicing? Because as Christians, and I hope you're a Christian, if not, Pay close attention because I want you to understand how that can change today. But as Christians, we are people of hope. So how can we have hope when everything around, uh, around us seems to be vibrating and exploding and collapsing? When everything looks so hopeless, I have a new slash. Christians still face the same troubles that everybody else is facing. In fact, Jesus said this in John chapter 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. There it is, tribulation, pressure, tough times. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. We live in a world where troubles are real, but they're not insurmountable. So how do we get to hope? You see, it's a journey. There are five steps for every person to take to get to hope. Regardless of what crisis you are experiencing in your life today, I want you to make note of five things. The first is this. Hope begins when re reconciliation brings salvation. Listen to verse 1 in Romans chapter 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
You see, the bad news is that every person in the, wor in the world at some point chooses to sin. And sin destroys the reality of a close relationship with God that He intended for us to have with Him. Adam and Eve did the same thing, and guess what? We do the same thing as well. Now, the names of our sins may be different, but we are all guilty of the same thing. It all boils down to one thing. We've gone our way instead of God's way, and that ends up being hostile to God's way. The words found in the Old Testament book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 12, remind us of this tremendous problem. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. But the good news is found in what I just read in Romans chapter 5, verse 1. You see, Christ experienced pain. He experienced suffering and death with the goal of doing one very important thing for us, reconciling us to God. Our pain and our suffering because of sin is designed to make us want to be reconciled to God. Once you choose to trust in Jesus Christ's sacrificial death on the cross for you, he rose from the grave and he ascended to the Father in heaven because he wants to be your advocate, your defense attorney, your helper, your savior. If you're lost, if you're enveloped with your sin and self, it's time to turn to the savior. This means that you will no longer be hostile to God. And you may say, well, I'm not hostile to God. In our sinfulness, we are hostile to God, even if we don't want to admit it. Won't you choose to trust in Christ's sacrificial death? When you repent and have faith in Him, the war with the Lord is finally over. You are given the gift of eternal life and everlasting peace with God. Yes, reconciliation brings salvation so we can get to hope. Secondly, write this thought down. Hope grows even when salvation brings tribulation. Listen to verse 2 in Romans chapter 5 and the first part of verse 3 where it says, By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not so only, but we glory in tribulations also. Wait a minute. Did Paul just tell us to rejoice and glory in our tribulations? Man, he must be a few fries short of a Happy Meal if you ask me. But he isn't telling us what you think he's telling us. You see, there's a, a law of suffering. And here's how it works. Suffering's real, but suffering produces endurance. And then that endurance produces character. And then that character, in the end, produces hope. And that's the journey we're on, the journey to hope. You see, as the Lord builds faith in Him, He will allow you to experience tribulations and trials. It's so important. The tribulation that most people are focused on right now is the coronavirus, COVID-19 it's called. But did you know that in the midst of all of those breaking news stories about the coronavirus, that the people of the Salt Lake City, Utah area experienced this past week a 5.7 magnitude earthquake that shook their world. Did you also know that the people in Africa, in parts of the Middle East, are experiencing an additional kind of tribulation as swarms of locusts are forming in the Horn of Africa, Kenya, Ethiopia, Somalia, and are most at risk, but then also Swarms are also forming in Pakistan and India, Saudi Arabia, and Iran, wiping out many of their crops. While all of that is enough, there are also bushfires that have been burning since September in parts of Australia that have burned up over 15.6 million acres of land. This is apocalyptic, isn't it? Fires have killed at least 25 people and burned and wiped out over 2,000 homes. Did you know, and grab onto your seat here, you need tribulation in your life. 
You need times of pressure, times of conflict, times of trouble, heartache, and disappointment. You may say, well, why do I need stuff like that? We need those things in order that God might grow us in our spiritual relationship with Him. That's right. It is important that we go through tough times. You'll grow many times faster through the tough times in your life than you will in the great times of your life when you think you've got it all together. Tribulation must come. Why? So we can get to hope. Hope blossoms when tribulation brings determination, thirdly. So in the last part of verse 3 here in Romans 5, we find that hope blossoms when tribulation brings determination. He says, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. The bad news of tribulation brings us to the good news of determination and patience. Any good physical therapist, my daughter is a physical therapist, and any good athletic trainer will tell you that if you want to build up a muscle, you have to endure the painful process of challenging that muscle, working out that muscle. Stuart Briscoe once told of a Korean Christian who had told him of how he and his friends had been under communist rule and they were feeling great pressure from the communists. Uh, and they used to say, we are like nails. The harder you hit us, the deeper you drive us. And friends, we need to remember that. The harder you hit us, the deeper you drive us in our faith, our determination through tribulation. Now, we can choose to retreat. We can choose to resent. We can choose to resign ourselves to whatever we're dealing with in our conflicts and our hard times. But the good news is that God's plan is for you to leave where you're at and patiently follow the Lord. Your, your plan is not the same as God's plan. Make your plan one of assurance. Assurance that God will never leave you nor forsake you as it tells us in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. The Bible also says through the words of the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. Can you believe that? We have infirmities, don't we? That the power of Christ may rest upon me. I believe that what we are going through right now with the coronavirus and many other things that are affecting our world in such a difficult way can be used by God to take us to the next level in our relationship with God. I can already see the things happening at Friendship Baptist Church that will make us a stronger church six months from now than we were six months ago. Determination must come so we can get to hope. Fourthly, hope matures when determination brings reputation. Listen to verse 4 here in Romans chapter 5. And patience, experience, and experience, hope. Another word for reputation is the word character. The word character is used in the Bible to speak of gold that is tried in the fire, and as that gold is placed in the fire, in the heat, the dross, the impurities begin to rise to the surface and they can be skimmed off to make that gold even more valuable, even more priceless than it already is. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 and 13 reminds us of this. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. So important. The Apostle Paul gives us a workout regimen. In that workout regimen, we are designed to build character as we endure problems. We are enduring trials and crises. Listen, friend. God is going to put you in the fire of affliction, not to hurt you, but to test you. A faith that cannot be tested cannot be trusted. Testing shows impurities that need to be burned out of your life. 
I can honestly tell you that the times when I have grown the most in my relationship with the Lord is during times of awful testing. My life in terms of reputation, in terms of character, has grown through times of hardship, pressure-filled times, troubled times. Very few people grow in their reputation and character in those times when everything's going great because reputation must come so we can get to hope. Finally, fifthly, hope is realized when reputation brings expectation. Hear the words of Romans chapter 5, verse 5. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. As believers, we are to live in expectation. Another word for expectation is hope. Hope does not mean maybe. It means confidence. It means rock-solid faith. It means the knowledge that you have been through the fire and God has not failed you. Hope means that God has kept his word, that nothing can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Friend, God is working on your behalf for good purposes. He wants you to have hope. He wants you to hold on to your faith in God because he will give you hope in a seemingly hopeless situation. He sees you. He knows you. He loves you. And he is with you. My God is telling us to rejoice in our afflictions because God is working in those afflictions for our good and his glory. I close with these thoughts from Romans chapter 8, verse 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Ultimately, God is preparing us for an eternity that is without any suffering, any pain, any sickness, and any death, any viruses. My God is a God of hope. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for each and every person that has joined us this day. I pray your special blessings on them as they go through difficulties. Some that are listening are not believers in Jesus Christ yet. They're skeptics. They're looking for answers. They're looking for direction, and you have it. I pray that there'll be someone today that will say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Forgive me of my sin and save me today. And Father, I pray that they'll have the courage to pick up the phone and call the church at 953-9509 and share that life-changing decision so that we might follow up with them and help them with some important materials. I also pray for believers who are struggling today. Lord, give us hope. And in that long road of tribulation, determination that builds expectation and reputation, I just pray, God, that you'll form our character even stronger than before. We love you, Lord. We thank you. We pray that you'll be with each one in the days to come. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Thank you. God bless you. We love you. We're praying for you. And I look forward to seeing you again soon.